Hey everyone, let's take a quick look at setting up our graphic novel pages in Krita. Krita is an amazing piece of software for drawing, painting, vector graphics, animation. There's so much you can do with it, and there's tons of tutorials on the web and on the Krita website itself. Uh, in all the features of Krita, I invite you to explore this software and learn a lot about it. Today in this tutorial, we're just focusing on one small aspect of Krita related to our project. So once you have Krita open, in order to get the screen layout to match my screen layout, go up to Windows, Workspace, and select Big Paint 2. That will lay out the screen the way you see it here. We're going to open up a new file, and we'll choose the manga template. This gives us a starting page for our graphic novel. We're going to go up to Settings, Dockers, and turn on the Grid and Guides. We will Show Grid and Snap to Grid, and uh, select our Mask layer. And on that Mask layer, we're just going to rearrange these squares so they line up with the default grid. So we'll select the arrow tool, grab the squares, and just tweak them so that they line up nicely on the default grid lines. Like so. And you know, you can change the size of the boxes, and, and you may change the size of the boxes later as well, depending on the content that you're putting in there. We're just going through and making sure that these boxes align to the default grid settings so that when we do make changes, the spacing can remain consistent. Um, once you've got that done, you can turn off Snap to Grid and Show Grid. Uh, also, uh, we don't need all the layers in this template. You see, we have a white background layer, we have a mask, and then we have these other layers, Sketch, Color, Ink, and Mask Clone. I'm shift-clicking those to select them all, and I'm just going to say, with a right-click, remove those layers. All we need is the mask and the background. Uh, so once we have this set up, we can actually save this as a template create template from image, go into comic templates, and call this my manga template. And now we're not going to have to do that step of aligning the boxes to the grids again. We can just return to our template. So uh, to bring an image in, simply drag the image in and insert as a new layer. And we see here that comes in as a layer over top of our mask. And you'd think we'd want the image to appear underneath our mask, but actually we want the layer to appear on top of the mask, but turn off its alpha so that it will uh, visually appear below the mask. And then we're going to use the four arrows tools to move this around till we get the composition that we want. And then I'm composing this frame right now, and this is all scrap that we want to get rid of. So we're going to scroll down this palette here to reveal the dotted rectangular selection tool, select the portion of the image that we want to delete, and hit the delete key. Select delete. So now we have this layer. And we can double click and change the name of that layer. Top left. That's our top left layer. There's our mask layer. There's our background layer. And then it's just a process of bringing in more images. Drag the image in. Insert as new layer. We can drag this layer below our top left layer, turn off its alpha, use the four arrow tool to adjust the composition. But what's going to happen if I do that is actually going to drag this selected area. Watch this. See it moves the selection. Command Z to undo. So we want to deselect, select, 
deselect, which is Command Shift A, and then we can drag the entire layer around. If we want to scale the layer, we can go to this scale tool with a dot in the center. And notice if we scale the layer, it doesn't scale proportionally. Things will get tall and skinny or fat. So we can Command Z to undo that and hold down the Shift key while scaling, and it will proportionally scale our image. Once we like the scale, hit Return. That will set the scale. And then we can do the same technique of grabbing the selection tool, selecting the parts that we want to trim, making sure the layer we want to trim is selected, and hitting Delete. Rename this layer, top right. And again, we have a selected area. Before we drag in another image, we might want to do Command Shift A to remove that selection and bring in another image. Drag in the image, insert as new layer, move this layer to the bottom of the layer stack with the four arrow tools, position it, turn off our alpha so that we see the grid around it, do any scaling that we want to do on the image by holding down the shift key and scaling. Once we like it, we hit return, go to the dotted box, and trim. Or I'm going to do something else in this case. Command Shift A to deselect the trim. I like this, this color here on the side, so I'm actually going to change the shape of my boxes. So I'm going to go back to Snap to Grid. I'm going to change to my Mask Layer, grab my Arrow Tool, And now I've resized this. I'll go back to my image, grab the four arrow tool, adjust the, the composition the way I want it. I might make this even wider. Go back to my mask, go back to my arrow tool. Snap to grid is still on. Adjust my grid to where I want it. I'll turn off snap to grid. go to my selection marquee, switch back to my image, and select delete to trim. And see now everything is falling into place. Command Shift A will deselect that box. OK, great. Um, we can, of course, save this. And this will save it as a Krita document, which will contain all of the editable layers. So we'll save it. Rename this into layer. Middle left. Um, and, uh, and then also, in addition, when we're done, we're going to want to export this as a, as a single image. So that would be File, Export, choose the image type you want, JPEG, is a good image. And it's automatically going to change the file extension. So this is page 1.kra. I can leave the name the same, because by changing it to a JPEG image, it's going to save it as page 1.jpg. Save. Choose my quality. 90% quality. And OK. And notice that this doesn't change into the JPEG image. This remains a .kra file that I can continue editing in. But in my folder, I now have a 
JPEG image of this that I can upload to Discord or email to someone. Uh, so let's also quickly look at speech bubbles and text bubbles. Um, we're going to go to settings, dockers, vector libraries. This will open up the vector library. There's uh, three built-in vector libraries. Uh, you can use these word balloons or you can use the pepper and carrot speech bubbles. I like the pepper and carrot speech bubbles. And uh, you can bring in a speech balloon. That creates a vector layer. We'll call it upper left speech. And with the arrow tool, we can resize this thing to be whatever size we want. But you see, it has this, this weird speech tail that's not quite in the right place. So we need to right click this and ungroup it. And the, these, these speech bubbles tend to be multiply grouped, so we may need to ungroup two or even three times. Once we do that, then we can select, I'll click away from it and then click back and you'll see now I have these as distinct objects that I can scale and modify. I actually don't like that at all. I'm just going to grab a different speech balloon here, ungroup it, and use its tail. And then you can add text with the T. Draw a box where you want the text to appear. Text dialog will appear. Um, a nice font you might want to install is CC Wild Words. It's a free download. Choose your font size, choose your color, and say save. It appears there. You can use your arrow tool to position it. And it's part of the speech bubble because we were on the speech bubble layer when we created the text. So this text is part of our speech bubble layer. And we can still edit all the parts of this layer independently of each other, like so. The other thing you can do is you can add a border to your speech bubbles if you want to do that by selecting the bubble, choosing a solid color fill, you see the border forms around it. And I can select the thickness of my border. And I click away from it to see the result. Now notice it didn't add a border to the spike here. So we can also select that, select the solid fill. And you see immediately there's a, there's a problem they're rendered as separate objects. So the way to solve this is to select both parts and unite. Then I'll shrink my border back down and now I've got my speech bubble with text in it with a border. The text is still separate and movable. So we can also add a text box using this box tool. Uh, we can add that on a new layer. So we can click this little arrow next to the plus and say add vector layer. Call this UL text box. We'll draw our text box into the layer and select it. We can select that it has a solid white fill, which it does, and we can also select that it has a solid colored border, and add text to that.
Select the arrow tool to move it. And in this case, we can't shift and drag on a corner to scale it. So we have to select the text by double clicking and saying edit text. And now we can change the font size. Go to the arrow position. And this text is also rendered as part of the UL text box, which we can move as a whole using the four arrow tool and adjust the scale of the box simply by clicking and dragging. Click away to unselect, save, and when you're ready to export, export. And here we can see from my previous export that there's the page1.jpg. And this page1.kra tilde is a work file where Krita is saving temporary data. So if I save this again, it will overwrite my previous JPEG version. And again, it's going to give me the option for my save quality. And that's all. That's just a quick introduction to laying out the pages in Krita.